update. So uh, welcome to the Housing Authority regular board meeting scheduled for Thursday, May 19, at 7 p.m. It's 7.01. We're going to begin um, with roll call. Commissioner is Nick. Here. Sorry, it's on mute. Here. That's right. Guy. Uh, Guy's here. And Joanne. Here. And Fiorella. Here. And Brian's here. Uh, Jack, uh, director and John Greco. Uh, I just want to update folks for the minute taking. Um, I had a chat with Sandy, who takes our minutes, um, and Jack, and we've we've gone into this um, tremendous job of doing minutes. And as Sandy explained it, she tries to write it verbatim, then she has to watch the meeting over again and in its entirety to put down what she missed. And then she gives it to Jack, who then watches the meeting again to make sure that he's got everything. So I think, you know, we're only obligated to have a summary of discussions and we're obligated to record the vote. So because these meetings are now recorded by cable TV and so forth, I asked Jack if he could amend, fix our website so we can link the meeting to the recording. And then uh, if anybody wants the detail, that's not in the minutes, they can go to the recording. And Sandy, rather than waste four hours of, of four plus hours of everybody's time doing this, then we write, a, we go back to writing a summary of the discussion and then obviously record the, the vote. You have to record the vote. So uh, we're gonna do that going forward. Um, and again, uh, only under the, con under the condition that the meetings are still recorded and people get the opportunity to go back and, and rewatch the meeting. So if things change and cable TV doesn't want to record them, um, we record them through our Zoom and put them on the website. Um, and then uh, then everybody has a, the opportunity to watch and, and listen and so forth. Um, is that, anybody have any objections to that? The other thing, this, as I'm thinking about it, maybe Sandy, um, instead of having somebody have to watch the whole thing again. So we've obviously got 17 items on our agenda. So when we go to the next item, so for instance, if we go to number four, uh, approval of the policy, Sandy, perhaps in the minutes, you could write the time that we started that discussion. So for instance, 7.05 PM, we discussed, we started discussing that. And then um, you know, 7.20, we started discussing number five. So that um, people, could um, skip the recording, go to that section if they want to rewatch that. Um, that. That's probably a good happy medium for folks if they want to rewatch these things. So let's try it. Let's see if it works. Um, okay. In the meantime, let's move on to the executive director's report. Jack. So just an update on um, Chestnut Manor. Uh, work is underway in the units that were affected by the fire. Uh, we do not have a date yet. Um, as far as when the units will be able to be occupied by new residents. Um, new ecology and ABCD uh, through the lean program are continuing to review the Hauser Building, Chestnut Manor and Winslow Towers for potential projects that will increase energy efficiency. And that's the projects that we've talked about previously, the ESOS heat pump projects and, and maybe even some other uh, potential projects too. Um, there are a number of other projects that are in the design and planning phase. Uh, that I hope they have updates for, for at the next board meeting. Uh, some of those projects include the electrical uh, panel uh, upgrades at the Hauser Building, Chestnut Manor, uh, the fire alarm system upgrades at um, for the cottages, in addition to the door upgrades at the cottages and some others. So I hope um, that we'll be able to move some of those projects along and have some additional updates at the next meeting. Um, in regards to the state ARPA funding, uh, we received notice, as you see on this agenda, um, related to DHCD ARPA uh, formula funding, uh, which, which I'll talk about at that point in the agenda. Uh, but we are still waiting for news related to potential targeted ARPA funding uh, for AHA projects. The, the notice from the state related to projects that could potentially be um, eligible for this targeted funding are um, anything from fire alarm system upgrades to electrical panel upgrades um, and some others, um, including elevator up, upgrades and um, handicap unit um, accessibility um, increases. So 
Um, we've, we've petitioned to the state to be um, to be you know included in the uh, thought process for some of these different targeted awards, and I think we have a really good chance based off of some of the projects that we have in the queue to, to get hopefully get some of this funding. Um, so hopefully we'll have some additional news for that moving forward. I also want to update the board that there's going to be an update to our phone system at the main office. Um, I don't know if you remember about a year ago, we had some issues some connectivity issues with the, the main office number. Um, and we feel that we've um, found a really good solution to avoid any, any um, additional issues like this in, in the future. Um, we understand that the phone system is, is an essential piece of our of our business model, and we want to ensure that, you know, regardless of if there's issues with internet connectivity, that we're still able to um, use our phones. So we're, we're working with Metropolitan Telephone, um, and they'll be, con, you know, doing the conversion for our ad administrative and the maintenance um, emergency phone line. Um, we're excited about the new options with this system, and the only the only um, real change with this, and, and we'll make sure it's communicated to residents as well as the um, the effective date is, is that the, the extensions through this company are required to be a three digit extension. As you know, the extensions at the Allington Housing Authority right now are only two digits. Um, so to, to accommodate that, we are going to just add a zero to the end of our existing um, extensions, but we'll make sure that's communicated properly to the residents. So for example, you know, my extension, extension 16 will be extension 160. Uh, but, but again, we'll communicate that well to residents in advance. Um, the Arlington Council on Aging provided a COVID-19 booster shot clinic at, um, at our senior public housing sites. Uh, the clinics were well attended. Um, again, we are very grateful to the Council on Aging, the Department of Health and Human Services through the town uh, for providing this um, critical service to our residents. And uh, we look forward to working with them on additional services moving forward. Our resident services coordinator was, was able to work with the Monotony Man of Tenants Association and bringing the Budget Buddies program to the Allen Housing Authority. Uh, we are excited about this great program, uh, which provides financial empowerment through courses and coaching um, to women. An informational session will be taking place um, on June 2nd between 5 and 6 p.m. at the Life and Skills Center. Um, additionally, in regards to the summer, summer health program that we did last, last year, uh, we plan on, on sending out notices in the next couple of weeks to notify residents of Monotomy Manor uh, that we will be moving forward with this, this, pro this program again. Um, we, we plan on the start date for the program being the day after uh, July, the July 4th weekend, July 5th. And, and our current plan is for the applications to be due uh, June 24th at close of business. But again, that notice will go out to the residents in the next uh, couple of weeks. Additionally, um, um, just an update on the family self-sufficiency coordinator job. Uh, that position still has not been filled. We've had, you know, some difficulty in attracting candidates there, and we'll be looking at either reposting or um, other options uh, for that type of position. Uh, but, but in the interim, we do continue to have our, our FSS uh, court world contractor that we that we hired to provide that service. Who uh, we're very lucky to continue to have. The vacant property manager, manager role is currently being advertised. Um, we have received seven resumes to date. Um, additionally, I did want to update the board that uh, we started our one of our first iterations of all staff training um, to try to improve our overall uh, customer service and uh, resident interaction skills. Um, that happened this past Thursday, and we well this past Wednesday, and we feel it was a um, it was a really um, positive training and we look forward to future ones moving forward. And um, additionally, uh, we'll be attending the Mass NARO conference next week. Uh, myself and some of the other management staff and some, and some of the other staff in general, we're really excited about um, some of the different interactions we're gonna have with, with other housing authorities and some of the content at the, uh, the conference. And we're excited about bringing some of that back to Allenton Housing. That's it. Very good, any questions for Jack? Joanne? Um, one thing I discovered when they had the tenant organization elections is that there, there are some seniors at Monotomy Manor, and these are the people most at risk now for COVID and need to have a booster shot, hopefully a second one. And I was wondering if there would be some way to reach out to them because 
you've had the shots at the senior residents, but there are also residents of Menominee Manor who may not have access or know how to get one or know that they should get one. I think it would be worthwhile um, sending out an email, potentially a notice um, to residents related to some of the um, some of the, the options within the town in general and in general related to at-home um, vaccines. Um, I know that there are programs like that where you know they can arrange for somebody to come to their, their home if, if needed um, to provide that service. So we can look into that and, and make sure that's that information is, um, okay. is, is issued out. Thank you. Yeah, Jack, I believe, I think I know the answer, but I think for everybody, the property manager does have an email address for some in each unit down there, right? Whether it be a parent or a child, right? As a contact. There, there is a, for most residents down there, there is an email address associated with the household. Good. And we have identified um, the, the households that do not have an email address. And um, we take special care to, um, to try to issue those individuals out paper notices. Um, in so you, case. so you, so you know something like this notice that you want to talk about, we could blast this out immediately. That's correct. Yeah, we can do that first thing tomorrow. Yeah, that's good. Well, the one person I was thinking about is actually blind, and maybe I think he has a relative who helps him. I don't know that they have a computer, so there's only a small number I think of seniors. Undoubtedly, the property manager would know who they were. Maybe she could also just reach out to the seniors who are there, tell them they should be getting this booster shot, and maybe some options of where they can get them. Actually, you might want to expand that because uh, the booster shot, I mean, obviously, if you're over 60, you qualify. But if you have medical issues, you qualify too. So people might not know that. Maybe, you know, since kids are able to get the vaccine, and I, I haven't been paying attention to the, the, the procedures or whatever, you want to check with public health. I mean, if kids are eligible for the vaccine now, then maybe you maybe your notice is, hey, you know, are there any kids in addition to uh, disabilities or sickness or our age? You know what I mean? We can get one thing. Because um, it's obviously it's the same shot. That you're getting, so, but... Um, Good, you're on top of that, so. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for Jack? Okay, so let's move right on. So number one, uh, number four, uh, approval of the Mon Monotomy Manor exterior facility and outdoor uses policy. Now, everybody's taking a swipe at this. Jack sent out the final version today. Um, uh, it appears that the board is 100% on board. But for the audience, I'll just explain a couple things here. Um, on this policy. Uh, this basically, uh, um, we came down to, to this uh, on a couple things. Uh, the gardens of last year, Fiorella's uh, concerns at the last meeting, um, and really the overall need to have type of a, a document outlining what's allowable down in the Monotony Manor properties um, outside, the, outside the units. So um, it's pretty simple. I mean, this policy outlines what you can have. If it's not on here, you can't you can't put it out there. Um, and it kind of goes over certain things. Now, I want to point out one very important thing: reasonable accommodation. Everything that we do, every policy that we have, there is a an allowable for a reasonable accommodation. So, for instance, the garden policy talks about putting it next to the stairs. Now, uh, Chris and the staff have identified that's the best place as they feel. However, couple units down there I think that the front is is always in the shade and gets no sun and they historically like to grow some things on the side of the building um, that's a reasonable accommodation I don't see a big deal with um, you know the water we're going to install rain barrels down there so if somebody's going to start planting the garden this weekend well the rain barrels aren't installed yet bought 10 rain barrels uh, and we're encouraging people to use the rain water in the rain barrels. The rain barrels are 100% uh, secured. They're secured, so they won't tip over. They'll be up on cinder blocks, and there won't be uh, any way for contaminants to get in the barrel. So, so it isn't like it's going to be an open pond where mosquitoes can breathe. Uh, breathe. Uh, these are the tops are on the barrels and so forth, and they'll be sealed. So, um, but in the meantime, obviously, if you're planting your garden this weekend, 
Sure. Use a watering can and water your garden with the watering can. Uh, I know also in that policy, you know, we don't want folks washing cars and hooking up hoses and filling up pools and all that sort of stuff. You know, water is, in this town is extremely expensive now. Um, so we want, uh, we want to discourage people from doing that. Um, but in the meantime, sure, use the watering can to wash your, uh, to water the flowers. Um, under the first section, family responsibilities, shoveling snow, that doesn't mean that you have to shovel the walkways. I step through the walkways, but you need to shovel your stairs and your path to the walkway uh, or your driveways if you're in the duplexes. Um, and in terms of bikes and things like that, you know, the policy says put them around the building when you're not using them. Don't leave them scattered for a couple of reasons. You don't want to get stolen. Bikes are very expensive, but you know, you want the place to look organized and, and, and secured. So that's why that's in there. Um, a table, your outdoor furniture, you know, it's got to be outdoor furniture. It's not like you're going to bring a wooden kitchen table out there. Um, and you should have, as it said, the number of chairs for your family. So um, the other big one in terms of grills, we do allow propane grills. However, the state mandates that they have to be 10 feet, 10 feet from the building for a flammable surface. In this case, to be the building. So that's not our calculation. We didn't come up with 10 feet. That's the state fire marshal's rule. Now, 10 feet from a lot of these buildings means you're, you're out on the walkway. Um, that doesn't mean the grill has to be in the walkway all the time. When you're using the grill, it should be 10 feet away from the building. And then when it's not being used, sure, bring it to your area and chain it to your railing or chain it to somewhere so it doesn't get stolen. Propane grills are very expensive. Um, but when you're using it, you really want to ensure that it's 10 feet from the building. Um, um, decorations, sure. Christmas decorations, that stuff. Uh, different holidays, uh, we encourage you to put them up. However, just don't drill any holes in the building um, or drill any holes in the doors or things like that. You know, secure them somehow that you're not um, drilling into the building. Um, and, you know, no alterations is, is pretty clear. You know, you can't be installing, any, attaching anything to the buildings. Um, and liability is pretty clear. I mean, if you're putting your tables out there and that sort of stuff, the AHA can't be responsible for it. So um, you need to secure it to the best of your ability. You should have rentals, uh, renters insurance or something like that. Um, and into the violations, um, we're not going to be forced down there. Uh, this is pretty simple. I mean, if there's a violation, if, if something's not right, the staff is going to bang in your door and say, hey, uh, you, know, you need to do this, you need to do that. Um, give you 24 hours to move it. I mean, if this is on a, happens on a Friday night, the staff doesn't see it, you know, uh, it's not like they're going to show up Saturday morning. They're not on duty Saturday morning. But when they do discover it or if somebody reports it, you know, we're going to give you 24 hours to, uh, to correct it. Um, and if you don't, the staff's going to have to remove it. So if you're putting some piece of something out there in the common area not allowed and you don't remove it, well, then the staff's going to have to remove it. Um, and they're going to have to remove it at your expense. Um, you know, we've told you to remove it. Um, so it's pretty... I think it's pretty clear. I think it addresses everything, but I do want to hit home this reasonable accommodation thing. Is somebody tough to pick every single item or every thought process? But if there's something that is somebody needs or wants down there, you talk to the property manager about it. Uh, if you're not happy with the property manager's response, you certainly have the right uh, email uh, directors uh, or Jack or certainly one of the commissioners. Um, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, anybody have any questions on this? Yep, Joanne. Um, it's just one thing that um, uh, I've been talking to Jack about that. People have put these short little fences in their garden in the front mm. so the rabbits won't eat their plants. Um, and my sense is it's not attached to the building that they need to do that. What Jack and I are talking about longer term is to get some grant money and maybe get a fence 
that the same fence that goes all the way around mm -hmm. so that um, it looks uniform and nice and so forth. But um, obviously they need to have them. Yeah. I also want to say that um, although, I don't know offhand of a community garden in the immediate area in public housing, but New York City has 700 community gardens in its public housing, and it's been enormously successful. They have a training program for teenagers. Some of them have gone on in this field. They um, plant vegetables. They are now working on composting to put in the garden. And many, if you just Google community gardens, mm -hmm. public housing, you will see it's all over. In fact, when I called up about finding out different ways to have uh, meetings, they told me, some woman told me that their director, who runs the office, wants her to start the community garden because everyone, and I must say the other part of it is the studies they've done have shown that they're enormously helpful for people's emotional and physical health and creating community, which I can see beginning at, at Monotomy Manor. People are helping each other out in their gardens, they're outside, their living rooms on a nice day, talking to each other. So um, I think we, it, you know, it's a little trouble to work out the logistics, but I think that the benefits far outweigh the, these yeah, issues. Yeah, I agree. And this is something where Lisa and the association can take the ball and run with it. For instance, you know, as the association, maybe they can come up with a contest amongst the tenants for the <laughs> um, the nicest garden, the best garden and stuff. And, and they could probably coordinate in the springtime getting um, dirt, and, uh, dump trucks full of dirt, you drop there and, and buy a couple wheelbarrows, community wheelbarrows and mulch and that sort of stuff. And then, you know, folks that want the gardens can come and get dirt in their garden, manure or whatever it is for their gardens. Um, so it's, you know, I think it's, it's an opportunity. I mean, we had some people do it last year We'll probably have more people do it now. And once this policy goes out, people will realize that they could do it. So I, who knows? But I think, you know, Lisa, that's something you might want to take up and, and run with. Um, and the other thing is we've brought in, we brought in people from the community. They come mm -hmm. and donate their extra tomato plants and they help people plant them yeah. because people, some of the people, some of them are wonderful gardeners already. Some yeah. of the people know how to garden. Yeah. And I think that's a plus. Um, yeah. So, uh, I hope it flourishes. I must say, I was telling some of the board people that in the last Saturday's New York Times, they had a whole page story about one teenager who wasn't doing well, but he joined the program as an intern. And now he's running a whole new composting exchange of all the community gardens. And I just want to $200,000 prize for the one who improved New York the most in the last year. So <laughs> yeah, great, great. All right. So any other comments on this policy? If not, do we have a motion to approve this? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. So the motion's moved by Nick, second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes, so that passes. Uh, great. Um, Jack, as you saw in the letter that he sent out, you was going to get that out right away, the, the, the letter and the policy. And you probably have to adjust the fonts, whatever, so you're on one paper versus multiple piece of paper. So, but, but you guys can, you can figure that out. Um, okay, number five. Approval of certificate of substantial completion for the office of the air conditioning project at Winslow Towers. Um, do we have any comment on that, Jack? Well, the project is ready for the stage. Um, we're very happy with the systems, especially um, during the, the past week with the heat. Great. These are the mini splits that you that had to put in it. It was uh, quite intensive because it's a cement building, of course. But and, so and the only thing I. Well, the only thing I have to add is that, you know, it's exciting to see these work and, and the potential to bring them to other sites. So um, we're, we're excited about the potential moving forward. Yeah. Okay, do we have a motion for that? So moved. 
Second. Second. Uh, moved by Nick, second by Fiorella. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Uh, Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes. That's, that's the number six. Approval of extension for the contract for financial assistance, CFA for chapter 689-2. Jack? So this is um, this was a pretty exciting um, message I got over the past, maybe I think it was in the last two weeks or so, uh, from the state related to a contract for financial assistance for a, a development that was never um, was never built, uh, chapter 689-2, which is for special needs. Um, and so what, what we're looking at here is a project that essentially began in 2006, got brought to a halt, a halt in 2009, and just was not able to get started up. I, and there were a number of reasons for that. But what, um, what this is, is an opportunity. Um, I'm reaching out to the state and, and trying to get some additional information related to how to get this project moving. Um, and I'm, you know, currently in the process of starting the, the um, starting talks with the town of Arlington to see what options are available um, potentially to, to build this. Um, so, you know, there are, there is some bonded funding already attached to this project, which is um, which is great. I think it's um, what what it looked like is over two million, a little bit over two million dollars. Um, I want to get the specifics related to this, all the details ironed out. Um, but you know, approving to extend this will provide us the opportunity to potentially build this development. So um, I hope to have more news in the coming months. Um, but definitely a very exciting uh, opportunity. Where would we build it, Jack? Yeah. Where, Where? would? So I mean, that's that's the question. Back um, in 2006, they were looking at at the um, Chestnut Manor. At, at Chestnut. Chestnut Manor. Yeah, exactly. I was um, I was on the board then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, but we're, what we're hoping now is, and this will be part of the communication with the state, is that we could potentially consider other locations, and cool. and that's where I want to talk to the town to see if there's any potential options um, that we could work out with them. So yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, this was uh, Jack, and Jack really gets all the credit for this because yeah. remember we discussed it way back when in Chestnut Manor and we just yeah, exactly. the ground yeah. and discovered it in the files and, and um, uh, back forth with the state. So the funding is still there. It's been approved. Funded. Wow. Wow. So yeah. you know, if we can get somebody to donate uh, a big house to us, we can move forward. Yeah, we can we can tip we can tip our hat to, to Frank Hurd and, and the board of the, at that time. So yeah, yeah that was it. Yeah, yeah, Frank Hurd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we we need a motion to approve this. Uh, we need a vote to approve this. So we'll move the extension. So, so move. By Nick, second by. I'll second it. Second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor, Nick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Joanne. Yes. Fiorella. Yes. And Brian is a yes. That's nice cool. job. Nice job, Jack. Yeah. Posted. So, nice job, Jack. Yeah. Can't we get the house next to uh, CVS or something? Yeah. Well, well that's what I mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mentioned. Yeah. But the app would so, have. Yes. That that'd be a perfect house because, as you know, but the we operate... owner wants to make a lot of money. <laughs> I know. Well, who knows? This is a new. This is a new twist. I mean, yeah. new yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. As you know, we have the other facility that we operate. I mean, this is. This is special housing, so it's yeah. got a special meaning. It's an ideal location for yeah, me. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have what nine ninety five Mass Ave. Is that nine ninety five? That's right. Yeah. yeah, up near the fire station. Yeah, yeah. up yeah by the fire right station, next, right next to Kentwood, right? So, and that's and so much 15... for us not developing new affordable housing. Right, Jack. That's fifteen beds up there, right? Fifteen beds. Thirteen. Thirteen. Thirteen, 13 yeah. units. Yeah. Twenty twenty four hours supervision too, Jack. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, partnership with the, the Department of Developmental Services is our partner. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing is that, you know, I don't know if you know this, my daughter, uh, she's graduating BC with a degree of special needs on Monday uh, and works at the BC campus school for the special needs students. And you know, the students, once they hit age 22, they yeah, get no. out of the whole state system right. on their own. And there's no place for them to go. Yeah. So this, this housing, there's a huge need for this. So big time. This is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, good job, Jack. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very exciting. All right, so number seven, acceptance of the DC, DHCD Sustainability Award in the amount of fifteen thousand for the Manor Monomy Manor Flood Survey Project. So th this is something this. we've already talked about. Um, this is just a formal vote, um, right. so that I can sign, so that we can sign off on the the, uh, the proper paperwork with the state. Right. So do we have a motion? So moved. 
Second. Second. So we have moved by Nick, second by Gar. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Mirella? Yes. And Brian's a yes. We move down to number eight. Uh, this is a similar situation. Um, we, we received this compliance reserve funding um, and we just need a formal vote uh, from, from the board um, so that we can move forward and um, just finish the steps with the state um, for that funding. And this is the amount of $57,195. So do we have a motion for that? So move. Oh, Nick, Nick's got it. Nick's on the roll today. Right. So move by I'll Nick. Second, it. second by Gar. All in favor? Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Uh, Fiorella? Yes. And Brian's a yes. yes. Number nine? And so for this one, um, I, I would like to request to table it. Um, I think I, I misunderstood what, when some of my conversations with um, with, this, um, with Mallory Sullivan, and I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, this okay. this this funding is in the public comment period, um, so until the process is complete, um, it, you know we can't formally accept it. Uh, but I would encourage anybody you know listening or you know to encourage others to uh, provide that comment in favor of this funding for the housing authority. Uh, it's at town meeting. You sent the letter and everything, right? It's it's um, it's it's, it's 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 right now. It's advertised um in the newspaper. So I think that the um. Oh it's, yes, it's, oh, it's yeah. for evaluation yeah. period, yeah. and it also goes to town meeting. I think. I believe you're. I believe you're the correct. The final, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll table number nine, number ten. Um, acceptance of the town of Wellington Arapa funding totaling two point six million dollars. 2.654. And, and um, this is that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I think it's self explanatory. Yeah. Motion for that. You want it? <laughs> Motion to approve the ARPA funding. We okay, really we have a second. We, we really yes. want 2.2 million. <laughs> Please. I'll second, I'll second it. <laughs> all right. So we move by Fiorella, second by Nick. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Agar? Yep. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's mm -hmm. a yes. Thank you to all for way to go. Out on that, Joanne, Jack, and to our outgoing town manager for giving us a little gift as he leaves. Nice. Thank you very much. Uh, number 11, acceptance of a DHC, the Arapa formula funding for $906,000. This is another gift. Um, Jack, you want to chime in on that? So this is um, the funding I had talked about um, earlier in my report. Um, so this is the so the state in, in a twofold that the, the ARPA funding that they were provided DHCD, um, they were going to give every housing authority in the state one additional year's worth of formula funding, which is what this is. It's our annual amount for formula funding, capital funding. And then um, on top of that, they're also going to do targeted awards. So this is the first iteration of it. And then hopefully, you know, we will get selected for at least one, but I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe multiple projects will at least get, we'll get some funding for those targeted awards. Nice. Hey, hey Jack, is that on top or is that an additional year? What do you mean when you say it's- It's an additional year, sorry. It's, um, yeah. so we, we already, so we're getting our $906,131 uh, for this year, for fiscal year 23, we'll say. And yeah. then we're gonna get an additional $906,131 yeah. that will need to be used Okay. Uh, by December 31st, 2024. Oh, okay. and, and, th and those are the same rules for the town ARPA money and the other ARPA money that we'll sure. receive yeah. is that that's, there is a due date, there is a use by date, which is December okay. 31st, 2024. Yeah. Cool, okay, thanks. So I thought, we're they, were just, the, I thought we're they were just giving us another 900K for this year. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, they, they are, I mean, yeah. 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 yeah so so the, the pressure's on us to get these projects done. Right. Yes. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, so do we have a motion to accept number 11? So moved. Second by? Second. Fiorella. Moved by Nick, second by Fiorella. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Uh, yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian's a yes. We move to number 12, approval of the submission of the Climate Ready Housing Program application. Jack. So we're we're at a stage with it with this is this is some additional funding that we're trying to get for the um, an autonomy manor um, window and envelope project, but even beyond that, it's part of the what they're calling the deep energy retrofit. Um, 
work that's going to be done, which will include potential work to the to the um, to the exterior of the buildings, which could include uh, building wrapping and, and potential other options. Um, so this is just another funding source that we're actively pursuing. I actually have a meeting tomorrow um, just to to further discuss with DHCD and LISC, um, the nonprofit that um, that that provides this funding or you know does this grant process, um, just to determine again if you know, we are eligible at this phase in the project. I am, you know, we are hopeful we are, and that's why I want to preemptively get board approval because this, the application submission date is June 3rd. Um, it's going to be before our next meeting. So I did want to get your approval um, yep. in case we are able to move forward with this, but I will update you um, on, on the status at the next meeting. Great. Do we have a motion for that? I move to approve Climate Ready Housing Program application. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. So moved by Gar, second by, I think I heard Fiorella. Is that you? Yeah, okay. And uh, so all in favor, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yes. Duane? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes. Uh, approval of the minutes, uh, number 13. So approval of the regular minutes, regular meeting minutes of March 16. Give a motion for that. I have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of 316 2022. We have a second. Second. So moved by Fiorella, second by Joanne. All in favor, Nick? Yes. Gar? Yeah. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is <clears throat> yes. Now we have the approval of the annual meeting minutes of 421 22. We have a motion for that one. I motion to approve the <clears throat> annual meeting minutes of 421-2022. Great. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Second by, so moved by Fiorella, second by Nick. Uh, all in favor, Nick? Yes. Ga? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian's a yes. And finally, approval of the regular meeting minutes of 421-2022. I motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of 421-2022. Second. Great. So moved by Fiorella, second by Joanne. All in favor, Nick? Yes. Car? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. Brian? <laughs> yes. Um, public participation, LTO presidents. Um, in the chat, I see Pam. Pam Hauser? Now remember, you got it. Remember, we want to hear activities. We don't want to hear maintenance things. Well, actually, let's let's go off to here. Since we started the new public participation, and Jack and Chris, and the other staff have been going to your buildings and meeting with you as part of your little chat tonight. You let's let's have you add in. How do you think that's working? Uh, do you like it that way? Is it working? So tell us about your activities, but then tell us how do you like your one-on-one -on -one meetings. Okay, um, basically we have no activities at the moment going on. We're hoping to get something up during the summer. Um, and the one-on-one -on -one with Jack, Chris, and Roly and Myra are going very well. Good. And I just have to bring up one thing about the capital plan that was stated in there. Under local tenant organizations, it looks like Monotony Manor is the only tenant organization listed. Winslow Towers has had one for a long time because I've been president of this one for 10 years. Mm, so I think all the, all the buildings should be recognized, not just one. Are you referring to the capital plan that we're going to have that public meeting on? Um, yes. Oh, oh, that's a good point then. And, and, and I, uh, I could provide some quick clarification for yeah. that. So um, the state does recognize the difference between a tenant organization and a tenant association, which I just actually realized recently. Um, and and Minority Manor went through the, the entire process with Jack Hooper and got formal approval, which is why they are in the system that way. However, you know, we want to reach out to Jack Hooper and, and the presidents of the tenant association so that they can go through that process and get the uh, formal recognition as well. But we are but we're treating um, every tenant association as if you know they are a tenant organization at this point, anyways. We're um, you know meeting with them in accordance with the regulation and and mm -hmm. So that's a good point. So um, uh, as we go forward, Pam, uh, Jack, Amira, we'll uh, work with you guys and, and 
the other facilities to get you uh, authenticated in the eyes of the state. But, but um, okay, thank so you very much for that. Else? I appreciate it. Just that on our one on one meeting, sometimes I forget things. I've been sending emails off to Chris for things I forgot to tell him. So, it's <laughs> all right. That's all right. It, it's, yeah. that, it's old age and falling on my face. It's all right. I'm glad it's going well. I, I think it's, um, I'm glad it's going it's well. It's working much better. Excellent. It's working much better than having us all together. Excellent. So, all right. Moving on to um, uh, Lisa. Thanks, Brian. Um, so we had a, over April vacation, we had a, the Easter egg, uh, or spring egg hunt, and uh, it was pretty successful. We had over 40 uh, participants of children and um, over 2,000 eggs, and they wow. all the property like crazy and uh, collected them. And um, so we're still planning to have the cookout at the end of the summer for the um, school and um, looking into doing movie nights, um, one maybe a month over the summer, um, so maybe start in May, June, July, and August, um, do a movie night and probably um, possibly do it for different age groups. Um, and we can come up with a movie suitable to the majority of the age groups. Um, and as of right now, and then we have to get in touch with the police about the, uh, I don't remember what they call it, but the, the night, the day that they have um, with all the events that they're going to bring back to here. So we have to get in touch with them about that. I believe it's in September. So as of right now, that's what we have on board. And then um, look forward to Budget Buddies on June 2nd uh, to see how that's going to go. And that's about it. And thank you, Joanne, for coming down this past weekend for um, starting the gardens. We appreciate that very much. You're welcome. I loved, I had a great time. Yes, I didn't see you, but I will promise to see you next time you're here. <laughs> and Lisa, how do you feel that the one-on-ones with the staff are going, the management? Well, it's Jen, but Lisa is definitely probably on the meeting too. Um, uh, the one-on-ones, it's definitely more um, productive. I'm sorry, uh, Jen. She's a yeah. yeah. Sorry. It's okay, Brian. I'll let I'll let it slide. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's definitely more productive because um, we're able to focus on our property, and um, you know, we had a Zoom meeting this past time, which obviously, like whatever needs to be most accommodating. But um, I think in the overall, it'll be more productive and beneficial Excellent. to everybody. Excellent. That's great. That's great. So we appreciate that very much. That's great. Great. Thank you. Um, and I don't. Uh, we don't have anybody from Drake yet. Um, I, I will let you all know that we are going to schedule a coffee up there um, on an evening at Drake. To uh, We did it years ago when we had a transition of presidents. So we're going to schedule a coffee. I'll let you all know the date if you want to show up. I see Jack and, and I will show up. And the plan is to just to, to talk about what, is, what associations, how to do it, and try and encourage somebody to do it. Uh, and come up with some sheets of a uh, list of ideas uh, as we did when Fred was president um, and try and uh, get some encouragement there. Um, it seems like, you know, there's really nobody that wants to step forward, but it's, uh, it's been a very difficult two, two and a half years of COVID, so, um, which is unfortunate because it's a beautiful facility and there's an awful lot of folks up there. So, so I'll let everybody know that day. We're going to do it very soon over the next couple of weeks. And um, it's just going to be a simple coffee, you know, seven o'clock coffee and, and chat and you know, whether we can get, I'm not sure if we want uh, Mr. Cooper there yet. I don't, I think we want to have a little bit more, um, you know, hands on and then we can hand it off to Jack Cooper, maybe do a formal presentation or something then. But, um, but we do want to plan for that. Um, uh, jo uh, Joanne. I just want to make an announcement um, that, um, Winslow Towers is, is will be getting some flowering trees. Um, there was a Girl Scout troop who went to the tree meeting. In order to get their badge, they have to plant a tree in a public place. So I put them in touch with Jack. <laughs> and it seems like this Girl Scout troop was um, extremely successful in selling Girl Scout cookies. And their, their treasury had more money than they're really allowed. So they bought five. Are they dogwood trees? I think they're dogwood trees, flowering trees. 
for Winslow Towers and Rolly and the women who at Winslow Towers who do a lot of the flower planting and everything and working with them. And I think it's June 4th, they're actually going to come and plant the trees and get their tree badge. So um, anyway, I think that's sort of good news. Great, and I don't think, I don't see um, Mike McGinty, um, and I don't see um, Elaine. Uh, any, do you see Jack? No. No, okay, Joan Fiorella, did you raise your hand? Yeah, um, I just was wondering, so you're gonna send out an email when you do like the coffee? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's, gonna be okay. very, yeah it's gonna be very informal. I, I think, and we did this years ago, we just wanna, you know, we'll put up some signs, come to the, the, the community room, let's talk about, you know, really the do's and don'ts and the needs of, a, of an organization. I mean, they had a thriving organization years ago uh, when Kathy was alive back then, and, um, um, and they need to do it again. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, there's an awful lot of units up there, so uh, beautiful property. So, and, and, and I, what I'll do is I'll type up a list. I have a list of you know, suggestions for associations to do simple things, puzzle clubs, you know, card games, things like that. Um, and, and I discussed with Jack, you know, do we look to hire an activities director? I know we're getting off Calta, but, but do we look to hire an activities director, kind of like they have in nursing homes and assisted livings that would spend time at the towers planning activities and helping run activities for the residents um, and, and kind of rotate, you know, at each one um because covid is was horrific and you know I, I get a lot of phone calls from different folks in different towers and and truly this this uh, we need to find activities for people to do um so they keep the community and, and become involved and active and stuff um and i think we need that now more than ever since covid is, is hopefully over um we need to find activities and, and this is really once we get over town meeting we get joanne up on, on grant writing uh, this is truly the purpose of the of the foundation the charitable foundation so that perhaps we can raise enough money to hire an activities director and and things for the um the, the different buildings to do so um but i'll, I'll send out more information when that comes the only, we did have one one written uh suggestion uh yes pin we will definitely schedule cookouts at the building yeah absolutely i think we you know that the board can schedule a cookout at each building like we did in the past. So we'll take care of that. Um, there was one one uh, written email request to present tonight. Um, it was a request that we open our air conditioner policy from May 1st. And instead of September 31st, make it October 31st. Um, and uh, I asked Jack to put on next month's agenda. This is something that we have to vote on. Mm -hmm. well, it doesn't make any sense to bring it up and talk about it tonight in detail because we have to have an official vote. We can't have a vote because we didn't put it on the agenda. So I have no problem with it. Um, it's hot in October. So I see no problem with it. And we can discuss it next meeting. We vote on it because we do have an official air conditioning policy. So uh, I, I think it's a problem. And, um, but um, I don't even see the person on the list who brought it up. But that's OK. We'll put it on next month's agenda. Um, there being nothing else on the agenda, Jack, any last minute? No. Okay, we have the next meeting in June is also Thursday. And then hopefully the pains of town meeting will be over. Um, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> we may go until September. Yes, they're giving us Memorial Day off. But yeah. <laughs> Good luck. And Good luck. Over 1130 at night. Oh. 7.30 to 1.30. All right. And for the record, we've had nine attendees and three of those are staff members. So we had uh, members of the public. That's probably our lowest in all the meetings we've had so far. But All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <clears throat> oh, you want to keep going, huh? Second. Second. <laughs> second by God. So moved by Nick. Second by God. All in favor, Nick? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Okay, watch out. I'll send the email about the coffee up there, and we'll yeah. see you next month. Thank you. See you later, guys. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Thank you, guys.